again, really great, grateful to have you on. I what I, I guess what we could start was I'll just read the abstract to this paper, and then we'll start working our way through it sequentially. Um, the abstract reads that high public debt often produces the drama of default and restructuring, but debt is also reduced through financial repression. That's a key term in this paper, which is a tax on bondholders and savers via negative or below market real interest rates. After World War II, capital controls and regulatory restrictions created a captive audience for government debt, limiting tax base erosion. Financial repression is most successful in liquidating debt when accompanied by inflation. For the advanced economies, real interest rates were negative for half the time during 1945 to 1980. Average annual interest expense savings for a 12 country sample range from about one to 5% of GDP for the full 1945 to 1980 period. We suggest that once again, financial repression may be part of the toolkit deployed to cope with the most recent surge in public debt in advanced economies. Um, yeah, so we're gonna pick a lot of that apart. There's a lot of terms in there and the authors do a great job of unpacking it, but I'd love to first just hear your general thoughts on kind of the abstract and where, you know, again, this paper was a recommendation by you. So maybe the impact that this, this paper had on your thinking in particular. Yeah, this is, it's, it's funny because they actually lay the outline out pretty clearly. And this, this was published in major, uh, you know, in major organizations, right? So she actually, they published a, an earlier version of this paper in 2011 Hmm. Uh, with the National Bureau of Economic Research, which is the the organization that officially call uh, calls recessions in the hmm. U.S., they're the ones that basically you know define a recession. Hmm. Uh, and then they also you know republished an updated version of the paper here at the IMF. Um, and so these are you know obviously rather you know large official bodies, um, hmm. and they're basically just coming out and rather bluntly outlining what happened historically and what is likely to happen in the future regarding the real returns. Um, of of cash and government debt uh, in an era of high debt, you know, relative to economic activity, mm. and some of the unsavory means that are employed in mm -hmm. order to make that possible. Um, and so it's actually, you know, they use a lot of jargon, but they're also actually surprisingly direct, mm -hmm. uh, you know, with with the descriptions of what happens. And they're, you know, my initial approach into understanding how debt cycles end uh, was through Ray Dalio. Uh, his mm -hmm. concept of the long-term debt cycle. He's been talking about that for something like a decade now. Uh, and that's the idea that, you know, you have these normal business cycles, you know, you have credit expansions, credit, you know, contractions, uh, but that, you know, in this modern financial system, uh, they basically, you know, because you have central banks and you have fiscal policymakers, uh, when you start to get a deleveraging event, uh, they come in, they cut interest rates, they do fiscal stimulus, they try to short circuit that at some point. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they start rebuilding debt from there. And so as a result, you get higher and higher debt over time, like higher highs and higher lows, and you get lower highs and lower lows in terms of interest rates. And that works until you hit, you know, basically you can get higher debt, but then the, the interest expense on that debt is offset by lower interest rates. And so interest, you know, interest to maintain that debt is not really going up, even though debt is going up relative to incomes, relative to economic activity. Uh, but that stops working once you get around the zero bound or even slightly negative in some cases. It's, it's much harder to go to deeply negative interest rates. Right. Um, and so at that point, higher debt would result in higher interest payments on that debt relative to the size of the economy. Uh, and so that's when you encounter what Dalio would refer to as a long-term debt cycle unfolding, which is where you get a different type of economic environment. And that's one of higher inflation, negative real interest rates, and what this paper would call financial oppression, basically inflating mm. some chunk of that debt away. Yeah, and mm. it could be could be a spectacular hyperinflation in some cases, or it could be these these more, you know, subdued, longer grinds where you're just getting inflated by several percentage points a year over the course of, of years or decades. Uh, and so I think that's the, that's the, this is an environment where being familiar with history is very helpful because the last time we encountered public debt to GDP levels as high as they are now was back in this, you know, 1940s war era, mm -hmm. uh, which is the last, you know, time that did, 
you know, in Dalio's terminology, would be a long-term debt cycle, and it would be the the last time, uh, you know, that there was a fourth turning. That's kind of the the mm. qualitative social aspect of what was happening at the time, and so I think this is really instructive. And I think one more point I'd bring up is that there was a study by Hirschman Capital a couple of years ago, I believe, and they analyzed uh, public debt in in you know dozens of countries around the world going back about 200 years. Uh, and they found that 98% of the time, if you got to about 130% debt to GDP, uh, you'd have a default of some sort within mm. the next 10 to 15 years or so. And that default could take a number of forms. If it's an emerging market that has debt that's not denominated in their own currency, or it's not denominated in something hard like gold, mm. uh, they're more likely to restructure and outright default in various ways, basically say that we, we just don't have the capability to pay this back. Whereas, of course, if you have the liability denominated in a adjustable currency that you can print, uh, the the quote unquote default takes place in real terms where you get paid back every unit you're owed, but yeah. those units are you know devaluated in, in a rather uncomfortable way. Mm -hmm. And so they, they were kind of highlighting that in the current environment, we're likely to experience that type of thing over the next 10 to 15 years. And I would say in the, in the couple of years since that paper came out, we're kind of well in our way uh, to, to having that play out. Yeah, it's it's quite interesting um, how pervasive and large this this debt structure has become. And you know, I think the Austrians were right when they rooted this in the basement of the money. You know, a lot of the Austrian business cycle theory, the increased booms and busts you're talking about. Uh, you know, Mises talked about this back in 1949. He said that's basically the, the inevitable outcome once you start debasing the currency. You have to get back to economic reality, either through deflationary shocks or further debasement. And if we, let's, we'll try to, keep, I'll try to keep bringing us back to simplicity here, because I know it's very easy to get carried away in a lot of this terminology. So if we just consider, and please correct me anywhere I'm wrong on any of this, debt as just simply a promise to money in the future, or a promise to some payment of goods or services in the future. And exactly, this... and, the, and of course, there's different forms. There's there's securities that it's packaged versions, and there's mm -hmm. there's loans, and there's ones that are you know issued by private entities, and there's ones issued by official public entities. Yes, and in general, this paper is detailing how governments have both accumulated and then subsequently discharged their debts <laughs> across history, both advanced and emerging economies, and all the different machinations they've used to. Uh, I guess a, a number of things to freeze, to get captive audiences, as they say, to freeze capital in a certain location so they can tax it or, or debase a currency. Mm -hmm.